Hey, everybody. Hopefully you guys can see us. We're trying to squeeze into one screen here. Welcome to this week. Oh, I need to record this. Is Celie Smith on? Do you guys know? Can you see her in the chat? Oh, there she goes. All right, she's on. We're just waiting for her. Promote to panelists. Okay. All righty, we're live. So let me go ahead and get this recorded and we're going to get this party started. Welcome, you guys, to week 12 of Escape Your Matrix. This is our second to last week. Next week will be our last week, but we have all of our mentors on today that were in our series. So I'm looking forward to hearing from them and their questions. You guys ask them questions. So we're going to get this started. So let me pull up our list of questions here. We're going to actually do this in alphabetical order because I sorted it that way. So if your name is an A, then you're your first, Alicia. <laughs> so we're gonna get with that going. All right, we got Alicia first. So let me pull up these questions real quick. All right, Alicia, first of all, can you unmute yourself? I wanna make sure. Hi. Yeah, I hear you. Hi. Yay. All right, awesome. Sweet, okay. So the first question is for you. And it says, hi, Alicia, what is the number one activity that got you quality leads? Thank you. I don't know who it's from. These are all going to be kind of anonymous because it was all emails. So you can answer that and then uh, we'll open it up to the rest of the mentors right after. Okay. Um, I, I get quality leads just really working Jenna and relationships with people. They started online and um, now I'm out and about building, joining networking groups and things like that. That's where I get quality leads. It's from building those relationships over time. Those are usually the people who end up coming on board and, you know, blowing up a little bit, <laughs> blowing yeah. it up. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. just quality leads, building relationships over time with people. And um, those are the ones who stick with you and keep right. working with you. So Awesome. Great answer. I probably would have said the exact same thing. All right, um, some people are saying they can't hear anything, so make sure you refresh your screen. Sometimes that happens. Um, but let us know in the comments if you can hear us. Put a thumbs up. I don't know if you can do that in the chat, but put an emoji if you're on Facebook Live if you can hear us. Um, comment. Yes, you can hear. Okay, awesome. I didn't want to do this whole thing on mute, so. Alrighty, let's get to our next one. So the next A is all mentors. So we're gonna get some of these all mentors. And if you guys have the answer and you think your answer is awesome, just raise your hand and we'll go to you. Um, Megan, we don't have a lot of questions for you. So if you wanna chime in, this would be a good one. Um, so, all right, let's get on with this. Let's see. For the, so this is for everybody. Um, how do you close the sale, taking an interested person to a buying customer? So how do you close the sale? That's uh, that's the question. Who wants to answer that? All right, Megan, <laughs> go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, so the way I close the deal is when somebody contacts me and uh, is wanting to be a customer, I really just find out like what they're needing, like what are they wanting to take it for? What are they hoping to get out of it? And uh, just really explain the benefits. I'll throw them some testimonies um to show them what it can do what it has done our customer reviews and uh, i really just listen to them and don't tell them a bunch of information about the products i just like let them do all the talking yeah that makes sense does anybody want to add to that do you guys anybody have a different way of how you close the sale all right Celie and then robert unmute okay, there we go um so Megan kind of, I kind of did this off of Megan kind of learning from her, but um, basically when I'm having someone ask me a ton of questions and, you know, I, I can feel that they're right on the edge. My, my number one question is what information do you need to get started? Because, you know, sometimes they'll just continue to ask the same question over and over just a different way. So I just try to get straight to the point, like what information do you need to get you on board and to get you into the groups and to get your, you know, the train rolling. And that, typically nine times out of 10, they'll tell me, send me your link, or I need this, or I need that. And then you answer that question. It's okay, let's get you started. So 
that is probably the most um, effective question we have found in my group and my following that it just it's straight to the point and it's a nice way of asking how to like give me your credit card <laughs> you're ready to pay you've already asked me all the questions you need so let's get you started and that's basically how we do it awesome great answer robert you wanted to say something to the effect of that yeah, the, one of the things I love is using the tools that you guys put together. So I say to people right away as I go, you know, I can give you all the information you possibly could get, but you're still not going to make a decision to do this unless you try the product. And so can you imagine the company gives you 30 day money back? I said, you got to try the product. So after you get all the questions, you're still going to want to try the product. So why don't we just get that out of the way? And so I tell them my personal story where I tried the product while I was doing all my research and while I was trying the product, then all of a sudden I got this system saying, you got to pre enroll you got to pre enroll So I, it's funny how we always seem to do the business exactly the way we're brought in. You know what I mean? So I just tell them, listen, let's just get that product trial out of the way. It's a money back guarantee. And do you want to try it at retail or wholesale? And everyone goes, oh, well, wholesale. And I go, great. I'll send you that link. Let's get that over. <laughs> so thank you. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great answer. And you kind of have to buy in order to try the product. So now you're in, right? I have one thing to add to that. Right. Uh, if, is that okay? Yeah, we'll let you talk. Okay. Um, so one thing that I would just add is I've noticed that the reason why a lot of people do not close a sale in the network marketing industry is because they are not asking the right question. A lot of people will send information you know, they'll follow up, they'll get people the website, but they don't actually ever get to the buying question, which is, are you ready to become a customer or an affiliate? And if you start asking those questions to get them from prospect into being a customer or an affiliate, you'll start to get more yeses and more people will take action. So that's all I wanted to There you go. Add. All right. Hearing it from all kinds of people. So there you go. All right. Next question is... How do you find customers? This is for everyone also, so anyone that wants to chime in can answer this. How do you find customers and our affiliates who are enthusiastic about the product so that they will be consistent repeat buyers and or affiliates? I find the majority of my customers are excited and purchase for about two to three months, then drop off the face of the earth. <laughs> so they should have never joined in the first place. <laughs> That's literally the question. So does anybody have anything to say to that? How do you uh, keep your customers and your affiliates, I guess? Anyone have an answer for this? All right, let's see. Celie, go ahead, take it away. Um, so I have this really, um, just following up, honestly. I, I do it once a month because, you know, I don't want to inundate my customers, but I simply just ask them how everything's going. And, um, and I, when I say this, a, a lot of people don't connect these two dots, but be genuine when you ask them how they're doing and not just in a robot voice, like, how are you doing? Okay, that's great. I'm glad to hear that. Bye again. Um, you know, take notes on your customers, like say, you know, they got a new job promotion or they just moved. Um, one thing that I do say that I pride myself in is that I take notes on people and, um, when the next time I connect with them, I'm like, hey, how's your wife doing? I heard that she just got a new job. Like, you know, those kind of things. It's those little things that they're going to continue to come back and, and buy from you. Or just, um, you know, making sure that you're still connecting in some way, whether it be saying hello to them on Facebook or some type of social media. But um, out of my 150 customers that I have personally, I connect with every single one of them every month. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, mine's a little bit different for my answer. I just let people run out and then when they start feeling pain again, then they realize they should probably order again. So that's my answer. Not the best one. That's why we have other mentors on. All right, Kristen, why don't you tell us what your answer is? Follow up with customers. Like, I just don't. So if they stop ordering, that's on them. I focus on adding more customers. So I'm just constantly building my business. I never just like stay stagnant and just ride off of what I have. I'm always constantly talking to people, adding new people. So it's inevitable. People will drop off customers yeah. and affiliates. Will. And there's not, I mean, if you can follow up, that's awesome. 
but you also need to be bringing fresh blood yeah. into your business. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, as Josh says, some will, some won't, so what? So. <laughs> right? Some Any wait. Some wait. Anyone else want to add to that before we go to the next question? We do have a lot of questions. We good? We're good. Okay, next question is, and Aaron Parker, in case you're wondering why we didn't hit you yet, it's because AL for all mentors comes before AR. So that's why. <laughs> all right, this is for all mentors as well. How do you keep going during the tough times? Who has it? Uh, okay, let's do Amy and then let's hear from the Garzas. So I cannot speak highly enough about self-development. I mean, anytime I'm feeling, you know, like in a slump or whatever we call it, you know, I just have to get something motivating in my ear. So I always have audible. I mean, there's always two or three books going. And um, also just um, sometimes you just need to get out and exercise or get some fresh air or to do what you love to do. Because I think so much we just you know, we have all these high expectations on ourselves and we're stuck behind a computer or whatever. And sometimes all you need is to just get that new energy flowing. And so the two of those together is really helpful for me. I love it. That was a great answer. And just to answer you guys in the chat, we're not taking questions that are in the chat right now. What we're doing is we have a list that we've compiled over the last 12 weeks that was actually in our pinned post in the group. So you guys had 12 weeks to ask your questions and we just built the whole list. So we're not taking new questions on this just because we'd be here all night. So we're just answering the ones that were in the Google form that we had. So, all right, the Garzas, do you guys want to answer that as well? Yeah, so I uh, totally agree with Alicia. Um, that was going to be one of my suggestions. My other one, um, our amazing upline, David Gruning, he gave me this advice as soon as I started. And that was to set yourself a time limit. So I set myself a time limit of one to three years and I guaranteed to myself, okay, I'm not going to give up for one to three years. So then no matter what, if my post didn't get any likes, if I didn't make any sales that month, it didn't matter because I knew, okay, I'm doing this for one to three years. I'm committed. So making that time commitment was so important for me to get past those, um, like the slow and discouraging build. And that's my number one advice to people. Get in, commit, set that time commitment, and you'll be good to go. Yeah, I mean, Amy kind of hit it right on the head. Um, as far as when you enter those tough times, you do kind of need to get out. Just get out and reset yourself. And at the same time, you can kind of market and brand yourself doing that. Because that's really what people want to see. They want to see the lifestyle that this company is bringing you. So therefore, it kind of does it for yourself. You kind of reset yourself. And then you also show what you're doing. And then that also actually brings in more prospects that want to live the same life that you're doing. So Amy, you killed that. Awesome. And you guys, uh, for me, fear of loss. I fear of loss myself. You know, like what's the alternative? I go get a job? Like, no, I don't want to do that. That sounds horrible. Like I'd rather just stay up for a lot of nights in a row and get this done right than have to go back to the job world or have to go back and sell insurance again. Like I just... I fear I lost myself. My passion was greater than my fear, you know? So one thing I'll add, and then I know yeah. David has a couple things to add. Um, I have noticed that tough times usually come because you're focused on problems that you're experiencing. Like if you have a problem in your organization, somebody left, somebody quit, you had an affiliate upset, you lost a customer, things didn't go as planned or expected, right? Those are all, you know, those are all problems. And I've noticed that when you shift your mindset from focusing on problems to focusing on solutions to your problems, your tough time isn't a tough time anymore. So like in our, in our life, you know, we have a little bit different kinds of problems than maybe a regular affiliate would have. Um, we deal with a lot of corporate stuff, but I've noticed that if I get out of thinking that these are problems and I look for solutions, they don't become tough times anymore for me. So that's how I've, I've done it. Shift but your perception. Shift, yeah, shift your perception. I love it. David. David, on you, man. Let's hear it. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, I think where people lose it sometimes is they really need to put things into perspective because they sit and go, okay, I'd like to earn a doctor's salary, a dentist's salary. And, you know, they dip their toe in the business and it hasn't happened in two or three months. You know, you need to sit there and say, okay, well, hold on a second. How much time did a doctor or dentist commit into earning their income? You know, maybe eight years of 
university college and then uh, apprenticeship after that or internship. And then, you know, before they start even seeing dollar one. So they've got to, you know, they've got that time commitment. You know, I see where a lot of people lose it is they get involved in this business. They say, okay, well, in three months, I want to be making a residual income that I can retire on. Well, what if it took you a year or two that you could live like you won the lottery? That, you know, the cash for life lottery, where every month you've got, you know, income coming in no matter what you do. So are you prepared to commit a number of years to learn this industry, learn the business, learn from your mentors so that you can live that lifestyle? And the one upmanship that you'll have over the doctor, the dentist is on Monday morning, he has to show up for work to get his paycheck on the following Friday. And if you build this business right, you won't have to do that because build the residual income, spend the time, build your team, work with everybody and you'll have that income and be able to basically earn your freedom, live the life you need to live for you and your family. So, you know, you need to know what's at stake. And I think that's where people don't realize what's going on when they enter the business. They don't know what is at stake and what commitment they need to make. And if, you know, if you ever have a dull afternoon or you're starting to feel down, you know, do one of these, just pick up one of these books. I know this was a gift from Josh and Jenna at the leadership conference. So take an afternoon, read a chapter of this, and then get back on track and realize that this is a marathon and you're going to get through this. And you're going to get through the tough times. And at the end of the day, you're going to live the life. So that's, that's my advice on that one. That was, that was an a perfect amazing answer. Amazing <laughs> answer. Nailed it. Are you speaking at our convention? Okay. Just making sure. He is. We're, we're <laughs> making him. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see this for all mentors again. Uh, what is your go-to way of recruiting affiliates? What do you say? And what kind of people do you look for? I think that's an interesting question. You guys look for a certain kind of person or is everybody game, free game? What are we looking for and how do we recruit people? All right, Robert Hollis, you're up first. Yeah, one of the things I learned 31 years ago from my mentor is, um, and I know that this is not taught a lot, but he said, Robert, you're an auto mechanic. I said, yeah. He says, don't you think you should find people better than an auto mechanic? <laughs> and I went, yeah. And he goes, if you learn to edify and promote me, all you got to do is find people better than you. I will train them. You cast a check. And I went, deal. And I've been doing it ever since. So yeah, I purposely look for people that are making six figures. They're motivated. They're uh, already personal development junkies. They're going to the Tony Robbins seminars and they are frustrated. They are so dissatisfied with their lives and they're going, I am not doing this for 30 years. So you don't recruit them and they go, I don't have any money or I'm gonna get kicked out of my apartment by the end of this month, can you help me out? No, <laughs> it's like they got a whole different mindset. So yeah, I like going to you know websites and believe it or not, I gotta give a shout out to Travis. Uh, when Travis, you, when he did the matrix, I forgot about that. And because I did that in, in personal life before the internet. And when Travis said, listen, when I look on the internet on Facebook, I'm looking for a certain kind of person. I'm like, ah, oh, thanks, Travis. So I, 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 that's, that's what I do. So it's, it, it's fun to find motivated people like Aaron and they never, ever call you. It's like, they're just, <laughs> they're just going to the top of the deal. So there's my answer. And I do think there's a difference between being broke and having a broke mindset. Cause some people, they're just off their game. You know, I met a homeless man on the side of the road and he's like, listen, I'll pack in the warehouse. I'll do whatever I got to do. Like, I just need to get out of this spot right now. So, I mean, if I never recruited Megan with her last hundred dollars, she would be here today. Right. So I think it's a difference between if it's your last five bucks or if it's your last five bucks in your mind, you know, um, I think it's important to have the person that is committed and willing to make a change in their life. So anybody else want to answer to that? Aaron Parker, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, for me, I'm, I'm looking for people that were just like me, you know, because I can relate with people that were like me, obviously, that have been frustrated, who have been through the ringer in this industry, um, millions of marketers all over the world that are frustrated, that are, you know, that are not experiencing the level of success that they want. And when I found MDC, I was just blown away. I was blown away by the leadership. I was blown away by the comp plan, the system, the products. And I knew that we had something special. So when I find other people who are in the same place I was in, frustrated, not having the level of success that I know that I could have, I'm like, are you ready? 
Are you hungry? Are you ready to work? If you are, then I can help you have success. So that's, that's, that's what I look for. Awesome. Jerry, did you have your hand up or did I imagine that? <laughs> You're muted, just so you know. I don't do. I, I had it up, but these okay. guys really hit the nail on the head. I mean, I, I look for people that are ready to go, really. Um, you know, I don't want to work with anybody that I have to drag through the door. Uh, I'm looking for someone who's ready to, you know, if I stick my hand out, they're ready to push right through me and go. And if yeah, they're yeah. not ready to do that, then I'm on to the next person and I'll wait. <laughs> you know, they so can come back anytime, but I'm not going to chase anybody. You're looking for eagles, not chickens. Chickens don't fly. Right. <laughs> That's right. All right, let's go to our next question. We do have a lot, so hang on one sec. Okay. Um, how long did it take you to get to where you are? That's a good question for you guys. Took me three and a half years. Anyone else? Seely. 31 years. It took me 10 years. Not with Hemp Works, you guys. It took me 10 years of personal development, figuring out who I am as a person within business and how I treat other people. It, I mean, it took me a long time to get where I'm at today. It didn't take me, you know, everyone's like, oh, Celia, you've been in this business for only a year. I'll never be where you're at. Well, why not? I mean, how long have you been really working on your self-development and your success and your drive and what you really want in life? Like, how long have you really been working on that? And a lot of people will be go, oh, I really haven't been working on that. So it's probably going to take you a little bit longer than, than me. Um, but I didn't start working on it until I was 18. My first network marketing company was when I was 18. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. You know, I didn't care about personal development then. It wasn't until I actually went to a convention and actually it was um, with another company, um, not this one, but I went and it changed my life. Like it changed my life. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I want more. I want more with me. I want more with my family. I want more everything. So it, it doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight. You guys, if you're not willing to do the work, you know, you're, you're not going to get where you want to go. You have to be willing to do personal development and business development at the same time. So I think that's a good point. I didn't count all the years of failure. I just counted my MDC experience with you. I guess if you add it all up, we're in about 13 years in now. So for sure. Anyone else want to answer that since this, everybody's has probably a different answer. Robert. <clears throat> I, I apologize for answering over Sally, <laughs> but no, I, it's funny because I, I, I look at life as every every day, every week, every month, every year is a new chapter for me. It, it's fun to be able to always start new chapters. So that's why I said 31 years. It's like, I really truly believe that when I met, you know, you guys, uh, Josh and Jenna, it, this is a new chapter for me. And so um, my biggest key to success right now is I figured out that um, connecting the dots, moving backwards, um, that my biggest successes were where I was doing it for someone I love. So my last success was doing it for my son. This success is doing it for Terry. So, you know, so it took me 31 years to figure out that I need to be doing it for someone other than me. <laughs> so pretty cool. That's a great answer. I love that. Anybody else want to add to that before we move on? Are we good? We're good. Okay, moving right along then. I'm going to skip some of these because they are, you know, for, we're short on time. But uh, what is the best piece of advice you were ever given? And this is to all mentors, if anybody wants to answer that. Best piece of, of advice you've ever been given? Barb Miller, let's hear from you in the back. <laughs> Unmute. There you go. I wasn't sure I was going to get a chance to talk, so I had to jump in. <laughs> Um, no, my, my best piece of advice that I ever heard, I don't know if it was given personally to me, I was in the first company I was with and it was always stay connected unless you like go to the bathroom. And even then sometimes you got to stay connected. And for me, that's always been key to my business key to, you know, getting lots of signups, um, is just staying plugged in. Some people just don't realize how important that is. And I think when people are ready to sign up, they want to sign up now. If they want to buy product, they want it now and they don't want to wait. And I just find staying plugged in as simple as it seems. 
um, is just so important. And it's been definitely the best piece of advice I've ever gotten. I love it. Anybody else want to answer that? Best advice you've ever gotten or been given? No one's got any good advice. All right, Robert. <laughs> I didn't see any hands going up. So I'm like, hey, I'll jump in there. You know, um, the best uh, piece of information I got was three years ago. And that was um, that every day I, I, I exchanged my expectations for appreciation. And so I spent a majority of my life, you know, focusing on achieving success, you know, and it never was good enough, you know. So you get this, you get this, you get this, you get this. And it's like, as soon as you hit 5k, it's like, well, okay, I go to 10k, you know, 25k. And it's like, you're always focused on achievement. Now I'm focused on the art of fulfillment. And my biggest thing is, if you if you're always expecting, like, I think that, you know, David covered it so good. It's like, you're expecting. And when you expect something from other people or expect something from a situation, you're always going to be let down. People are just people. So as soon as you expect them to do anything, they probably will let you down. And so if you get up every day and you're grateful and you appreciate everything you're doing. So it's fun to get up in the morning and, you know, do my prayer time and, and my morning ritual. And, you know, you guys don't know this, but I pray for each and every one of you. I'm so blessed and grateful and appreciative to each and every one of you that set this path before us. So thank you so much. That's a great answer. Uh, let's hear from Kristen and Travis. We cannot hear you. <laughs> uh, I really, guys, for yes. me, you know, this is actually not like a mentor or anybody. This is Les Brown. He said, don't let somebody else's opinion of you become your reality. And for me, that's something I've carried with me in this business because so many times we're going to get attacked. We're going to get beat up. We're going to be told things like we're not good enough. It could be your very sponsor that tells you things. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, it could be your upline. It could be your downline. You're going to hear bad things. But if you let that sink in and creep into your mind and you start to believe their opinion of you, you're never going to make it to where you want to be. So you got to challenge yourself to be a little bit bigger, a little bit bolder and not accept what they say about you. It's the things that you believe about yourself that really matter. So if you kind of put up that, I mean, you got to put on your armor a little bit and be ready for the fight. Uh, and we're in a business right now that like, you, you don't want to be willing to fight, go sell candles because there's going to be some issues that come up and you have to be willing to stand up for that. So. I love it. I love it. I guess my best piece of advice that I've ever been given was to stop focusing on myself because I would say the first 10 years of my network marketing business, it was all about my goals. It was what rank I wanted to achieve. And it was, you know, I need to get out of this debt. I need to pay my car payment, me, me, me. And it wasn't until with the inception of HempWorks really is where I was like, dude, I don't even care about myself anymore. I just need to get other people healthy. I need to get other people wealthy. Like it's all about them. And it's, as I focused more on everyone else, it came back to me. So my best piece of advice is stop thinking so much about yourself and see what you can do for someone else. Because if you do that, it creates a chain reaction of good all around. So. That's my best advice. All right, let's move on. My best advice was from Jen and, it was, to, and it was to launch HempWorks. It was the with or without you. And it was like, all right, good advice. So anyway, love it. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, let's move on. Okay, let's go ahead and get to our specific mentor questions now. Aaron Parker, you are up to bat. Let's see, if you went back to when you were getting started in business, what did you do to overcome and build confidence in yourself? Wow, great question. Um, I think that building confidence happens when you get results. So, um, you know, I went through many, many years of being part-time in this industry, 15 years of struggling, banging my head against the wall, trying to figure out why I wasn't getting where I wanted to go. And I've always, you know, kind of struggled with that, worrying what other people think and not getting out of my comfort zone because of what other people are gonna think. And once I just said, screw that, and just be me, be excited, be passionate, who cares what other people think? 
And, you know, the confidence just slowly started to build. And then as soon as you start to get some results, even a little result, a little bit more success than you had before, guess what happens? Your confidence starts to grow. And then just keep compounding. The mistake that people make, the biggest mistake, I have it over here, I'm always reminding myself, is um, success. Let me see, I want to mess it up. Success is not owned, it's leased. And rent is due every day. So even though you have some confidence, you have some results, it doesn't mean you've made it. You, you know, you got to keep going, keep pushing, keep getting better. And as your confidence, as your results continue to grow, so will your confidence. I love it. Great answer. My next question is for Barb Miller. Barb, how do you stay in the top three leaderboard every month? <laughs> we all want to know. <laughs> Well, the biggest thing I feel is building relationships with people, building trust with people, letting people know who you are. A lot of people are scared to let other people know who they are. They're scared to post about whether it's something personal or their family or whatever it might be. And I find building those relationships and building trust is what makes people want to come to me and either purchase product or sign up on my team. It's been the biggest thing. If you ask people on my Facebook, you know, I have thousands and thousands of followers. Most of them know my kids' names, my dog's name, all these things about me that, you know, probably people that actually live physically near to me don't even know. And so that's been the biggest thing with getting people to sign up either on my team or as customers is just building those relationships with people. And if you do that, you, you'll see results. Let yourself be out there. Let people get to know who you are. And, and the biggest thing is let people trust you enough to, to join you. Yes, definitely. Great answer. There's more questions for you, though. <laughs> uh, when you have a team building under you, how do you find the time or balance between helping them build their teams and still marketing the products uh, that we all love so much? So, so how do you balance between recruiting and team building? So my goal for the past, you know, just over a year now since I joined HempWorks was to get to the top rank in the company, super affiliate. And for me, I've given up a lot. I've spent a lot of time. I've dedicated a good chunk of every single day for the past, you know, it's from when I joined of June of 2017 to doing this, to both managing my team helping them, um, supporting them, and still bringing in customers every day, bringing in new affiliates every day. I knew both would be important um, in order to get where I wanted to go. So the biggest thing is the dedication and time. I find a lot of people won't put that dedication and time in. You know, while other people are enjoying weekends, um, I wasn't. <laughs> and, and that was okay for me. You know, I missed most of the summer. I didn't go outside. I sat inside at my computer or on my phone. I mean, you'll see me too. You know, I take a vacation, stuff like that. But the biggest thing was just dedication to both my team and myself for recruiting new people as well. And just doing that and dedicating that time in that I had to do, I knew once I did that and I reached that goal, I could kind of take a step back and support my team more. Um, more than recruiting at this point. I think that's awesome. And I think it's a it's an answer not a lot of people want to hear. They don't want to know that we had to work hard to get to where we are. <laughs> they want to know that it was easier. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you know, we had a film crew in our house yesterday and they're like, what do you guys do for fun? And we're like, um, we work a lot. <laughs> we like to work, I don't know. Our passion is our work, it all runs together. But um, all right, let's go to the next question. I'm going to ask this question for Celie Smith. Can you explain how you help your downline to succeed? Um, that's a great question. So my biggest advice on that is be the sponsor that you always wanted. You know, I've been in network marketing, you guys now for 10 years, and I always got a sponsor that just all of a sudden just dropped off the face of the earth and just was never helpful. And, you know, I kept pushing, I made them a lot of money. Um, but you guys, Megan has been so supportive in everything. I mean, I've messaged that woman in like two in the morning, <laughs> poor woman. I love her. Um, but she really showed me 
you know, how to be the sponsor um, I am today. And so I always tell any of my teammates, I'm here for you. So if you have a question, if I don't get back to you in this amount of time, message me again, because I probably just lost you in the, the downpour of questions. But I, I want to help anyone that wants to come to me. Um, so yeah, just be the sponsor that you always wanted. And um, if you're not willing to, if you want to be at the top of this company, um, you have to be willing to do the dirty work, which is asking all the questions, directing people to where they need to go to find the information, putting out fires when you need to put out fires. I mean, it just, it is what it is. And then um, making sure that you're setting an example um, because a leader, all of us leaders didn't get to the top because we were, you know, complaining and talking about how crappy um, this or that is going on in whatever the situation is. So we always make light of what we're going through and, you know, just always be there for your team when they need you. Awesome. Great answer. I think um, I told Megan some things similar, like just be the leader you want to see in your team because they listen. They don't listen to what you say necessarily, but they follow what you do. So if you want a team of independent people that are self-sufficient, guess what you have to do, right? So next question actually goes to David and it says, I've been involved with numerous network marketing companies with little to no success. What would you say would be the most important factor for me to succeed here with my daily choice? Okay. I, I think initially what people need to do is they need to take a step back and they need to realize that HempWorks, My Daily Choice, is unlike any other opportunity they've ever seen. So to compare it to other networking programs, other things they've ever done before where they're competing with thousands of other companies selling the same protein shake or powder or whatever they're selling, this is unlike that. You know, I liked it when I looked at it, and I don't know for those who know or don't know, my background in the 90s, I was a corporate vice president with four international networking companies. So I've helped run companies like HempWorks. Uh, I've been out of the industry for 20 years had no interest in getting back into it. And then HempWorks came across my desk and I said, and, but I've always been a student, right? So when I saw HempWorks, I said, hold on, this is different. There's something going on here. And not just different about HempWorks, but different about the whole marketplace in that, you know, it's like what I like to call a perfect storm because we have a global movement that's happening. And I, I happen to be sitting here in Toronto and uh, today we legalized recreational cannabis across the country. So all day long, uh, on TV, all they're talking about is legal cannabis, recreational marijuana. So when we talk about a perfect storm, we've got the media on our side, we've got CNN, we've got Dateline, we've got talk shows, we've got everybody talking about cannabis, CBD oil, uh, medical marijuana. So it's a buzz. I mean, it, to the point where you've got things like Time Magazine, things like that, Newsweek, you know, it just goes on at McLean's, that's Canadian Business Magazine, you know, it just goes on and on and on that to not be in this industry, you'd be nuts not to be here. Because if you ever wanted to touch any networking program, this is the one to be in. And on top of that, we're the biggest brand in the industry. As Josh mentioned, many, many months ago, we're over a $100 million brand. I can't imagine what we are today. And I'm sure we'll find out at convention. But, uh, you know, so when you think of a perfect storm, a global movement, we're starting to spread across the planet with a product that every everybody can afford, everybody needs, priced right, the, you know, the, the price of a tank of gas. I mean, that's got viral written all over it. Why would you not be in this business? So what people need to do is stop associating HempWorks and My Daily Choice with other networking things they've ever done before. Because the one job we don't have to do that they all have to do is teach people about our product. People are actually looking for it. They want to find a source. They want a good source. They want a quality product. We've got a 30-day empty body money back guarantee. Like, how could you possibly go wrong? So if somebody looks at this and doesn't get involved with you, guess what? That was an IQ test. You don't want them. Send them in the other direction. And, you know, the other thing is when people say, hey, ground floor opportunity, and there's a lot of new companies starting out in this space, ground, ground floor opportunity just means run fast in the other direction. We're not a ground floor opportunity. We've been around over four years now, my daily choice already three years before HempWorks even started. So all the bugs have been worked out. All the paychecks go out on time. Everybody gets paid even in advance. Uh, like, you know, Josh, I think says, I've been here, you've, you've released early three times. And that's unheard of in the industry to actually do that. Uh, so people could have a great Thanksgiving weekend last year for the Americans, you know, things like that. So take a look at the company, look at what we're doing, 
nobody else is doing this. So really you need to get involved in this space with this company because this is the one that is the biggest and it's gonna be the biggest and it's global. Everything's working, just hop right on. That's my advice. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to sign up again. All right, my next question, that was an amazing answer, by the way. I hope you guys took some notes, at least on how to use that with your other prospects. But my next question, I'm actually tweaking it a little bit to make it more applicable for Jerry West, because I know he's going to like answering this one. Uh, how do you deal with <laughs> negative people, Jerry? <laughs> um, the quick answer is I, I don't give them my power. I don't give them the time of day. Because if someone's going to be negative with me, I'm going to go look for a positive person to talk to. I don't really have time to deal with negativity, whining, complaining, uh, people that are, you know, just, uh, you, you can't deal with those types of people. And the beautiful thing about being in network marketing is we get to choose who we work with. We even get to choose who we have as a customer if we want to. So if someone's going to be extremely negative and get me in a bad mood, Exactly, Aaron Parker. No negativity allowed. My my Facebook is a no negativity zone. <laughs> uh, I don't allow it, and uh, if it comes my way, I either unfriend it or block it or do whatever I got to do to remove it. <laughs> because there's millions of other people out there that are positive that you can go talk to. So <laughs> that's the yeah. answer to that question. I think we all agree with that for sure. Um, all right, next question is for Josh and myself. So I'm going to just let Josh answer this one. What's the best advice you can give when faced with someone who despises MLM companies, even when they don't understand them? Is it worth trying to convince them or is it healthier <laughs> to just move on and forget? What do, you do? what do you do with MLM haters? So my, my personal opinion is that I do not like to convince people to do business with me. Um, I feel like if I have to convince people to join, then I'm going to have to convince them to work. And I don't like convincing people to work. We talked about, you know, people that are motivated. You really want people in this business that are going to be motivated with or without you. I feel like that's the concept about network marketing that's so fascinating where you can introduce somebody to the business and if they're motivated enough and they're not dependent on you, you can create um, a massive residual income and really, really change your life. So I don't like convincing people to join. I like, like to give them the information and then ask the buying questions and let them make a decision whether it's for them or not. And if they're going to be motivated, because if they're not motivated, then I don't want to be investing my time as a leader in trying to get them motivated. I want them to already be motivated, already be sold on the idea of network marketing before they join my team. <laughs> so that's, that would be my advice is to move on and find more motivated people. And sometimes those people that don't understand network marketing, they will eventually come around. You know, sometimes if they're already negative, they despise network marketing. Usually it's because they just haven't had success yet. They've had bad experiences. So if you get them involved and you know, they, they have a chance to have a little bit of success, maybe they'll have a change of heart uh, later on, but I don't waste my, my, uh, um, time, to, you know, going after those people. And remember your time is your most valuable asset that you have is your time. So if you're wasting time on people that need to be convinced, um, it's not good. You should be spending your time on people that are positive and ready to go. I agree. I don't convince people anything. And I do point out that the only difference between MLM and anything else is it's just the difference in marketing. That's it. We have a different marketing model. Uh, we're paying our consumers to use the product and to refer versus keeping the profit ourselves. That's the difference. So next question is for us. Then we're moving on to Kristen and Travis. Uh, Josh, this is for us again. What is your advice for someone who's just starting out with very little marketing experience? How long did it take you to get your first affiliate? So I can answer that. My best advice for somebody that's brand new is to don't get stuck in analysis paralysis, build your binder mode. The first thing you want to do is, is get that list going. You want to have your game plan. You want to launch your business. You want to, you know, jump head first into it because if you don't, then you might get stuck in the, 
getting ready phase forever. And, and success is much more fun when it's faster than slower. So if you are brand new, get into the groups, you know, get with your upline and have them walk you through some of this stuff. There's every single leader, I think, in this uh, call right now has their own group. And if not, they're utilizing another uplines group. Um, there's plenty of training out there. There's training in the back office. Just dive into that. And that's a best place to start. One thing I'll add to that, to Jen's analysis paralysis. When I, when I, my first network marketing company that I was in, I had a little office that I had set up. And, and when I was, when I was brand new, um, I went to the company resources and I printed out every document that was in the back office. Like they had like hundreds of tests that I printed out. And in my office, I had every test laid out on a, on a bind, like in binders, in like the little sleeve protectors that go in the binder. I had everything like dialed in. And I called my upline, this guy, Ken, and he was like, Josh, you're doing it all wrong. All you have to do is find people, send them the presentation, and then get me on the phone. And I was like, really, it's that easy. That's all I have to do. All this other stuff. I went to Staples. I spent like hundreds of dollars on ink to print everything out. All that stuff didn't make me any money at all. So my advice would be to use the system and the tools that are in place and don't get sidetracked with stuff that is not a money-making activity, isn't going to bring you new, new business. So the important question that I have to ask myself is, is the activity that I'm doing right now you're going to bring me new customers and affiliates. If it's not, then don't do it. Only focus on money-making activities and do not reinvent the wheel. Use your upline, use the system, use the tools, and you'll have a higher chance of succeeding in the business. Exactly. That's what I was going to say, but he just said it. So there it is. I've seen his binders. He's not kidding about that. It's pretty serious. Okay. Next question for Kristen and Travis Butler. If you went back to when you were getting started in business, how do you feel about yourself at that point? Um, pretty, pretty bad, actually. I was, I joke, but I say I was suffering from network marketing PTSD. And I wasn't sure that I figured I was probably like a one hit wonder. And I didn't know if I could ever build a big business again. So I was pretty scared. But I decided that... I was more scared of being flat broke again, of losing my house again, of being on food stamps again. So I just decided that, you know, I'm just going to go for it and see what happens. And I mean, look at us today. <laughs> like yeah. when you put faith over fear, amazing things can happen. And I just didn't hesitate at all. I just... I remember the first conversation with Josh. I didn't even try the product. I was just like, you know what? I'm leaving my company and I'm joining and I don't even know if this product works, but here we go. Like, let's do this. Yeah, I mean, it was a compensation <laughs> plan thing. We mm -hmm. saw that, then we talked to Josh and it was like, there was magic in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I think when you can find that magic in the moment, it excites you and it like changes you. Um, because I think that whenever you're in network marketing, you're gonna have breakthroughs at different levels. Like you're going to have that first breakthrough of like, oh crap, I really just did that. I signed up. And then there's excitement with that. And you're going to have a plateau right after. You will. But if you can just find that new excitement again and you can keep that passion going, that movement, that movement creates a new breakthrough. And if you can have enough breakthroughs, you get to the top of the company. So like we started with network marketing PTSD when we started this. And then it was like that next day after talking to Josh, we had a breakthrough and we didn't have it anymore. So mm -hmm. like, I would say that we started at crap and now we're great. <laughs> and I mean, even to this day, negative thoughts try to creep in yeah. and try to be like, oh, what if this all goes away tomorrow and things like that. And I have to purposely remind myself not to be fearful and that those are lies coming into my head and immediately dismiss them mm -hmm. or you will drag yourself down. So it doesn't even matter if you're, you know, a super affiliate, you're not immune from negative thoughts coming into your brain, but you have to immediately dismiss them mm -hmm. and think of things, remind yourself. Like I seriously have reminders telling me I'm super <laughs> like, and that we're, 
millionaires and things like that. Just little things that remind me to stay focused. I love it. That was an amazing answer. You got to shush the inner roommate in your head. It's not the boss. All right. Next question is for Lacey and Tim Garza. And this question, this question is, is, says I have, oh, there's an echo. Hang on one sec. Are we all muted? Oh, they, of course you guys aren't muted because you're about to talk. Okay. Um, I've been in prevention, drug and alcohol, working with families and kids. What is the best way to handle those who are simply shocked and want to be combative with me regarding my use and selling of this product? Yeah, so I think that Josh covered that extremely well when he said, we don't have to convince anybody, guys. That's not our job. Our job is to share this with people who are excited about this product and opportunity. And if somebody's not excited, it's just time to move on, honestly. Um, I also have to say two more things. You know, I found HempWorks because I needed a pure product. I was pregnant. I took a common sense approach, okay? I chose nature over pharmaceutical prescriptions. And if, if they don't see it in that light, maybe they will eventually, you know? Everybody has to make their own choice on their own time. And then lastly, I have to add this in because this changed my business. Um, if you wanna make a paycheck, promote CBD oil. If you wanna retire, build a team. So I would stop focusing on those customers um, stop focusing on getting people to purchase the product from you and start thinking about building your team and um, seeing that residual income. Yeah, because we're not here to convince anybody. We just lay out the information that they ask for and then let them close themselves. That's right. We're the messenger, right? Yep, that's pretty much it. And you know what I love about our compensation plan is you don't get paid any different from getting a, an affiliate or a, a customer. It's the same commission. So I tell everyone, um, if you're an affiliate, you're a customer too, because every affiliate is a customer. So there you go. All right. Next one is for Robert and Terry Hollis. If you went back to when you were getting started in business, what did you do to grow personal and business wise? Um, could you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> yes. When you were getting started in your career, what did you do to grow? What were your growth uh, methods? Um, one of the things that uh, Terry and I did, of course, uh, I had a very unique mentor and he knew how broken I was when he met me. And he knew right away that if he didn't find a way for me to believe in myself, that I wasn't going to go into action. And so he immediately, um, I keep this book close to me no matter where I am, you know, The Greatest Miracle in the World by Og Mandino. And um, um, it's hard to talk about the book without crying. It really is because what that book did for me is it immediately made me understand that I was a miracle, that I was put here on a, for a purpose. And, and, and just to tell you a, a quick story, I was talking about this book the other day with a bunch of people and my wife came in and when we, when we first met, she couldn't get pregnant. And we just really, really struggled with that because she just wanted to be a mom. And all of a sudden she had a pregnancy and we got excited and then she had an atopic pregnancy. And so now the odds were worse than they're ever going to be. So I almost lost her. And um, she, she is not a religious person in any way, shape or form. So just the title of the book, she wouldn't read it. So she started reading the book and uh, you're supposed to read the God memorandum for a hundred days and on 80th day, Matthew was born. So uh, um, pretty, pretty incredible. So she not only became a miracle, but now we have a miracle. And then we just thought, well, listen, you know, the chances of having another one uh, is, is not there. And, and 18 months later, Kyle came. So, <laughs> and so it, it, I think it does more of making you realize that you have to allow things to happen and instead of forcing things to happen. So that's what we did. And uh, since that's been a, a, a crazy thing for us, we keep, we keep going back to it. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, Jim Rowan said it best. You, you got to work harder on you than you do anything else. So. I love it. That was our last question. If you guys have any last final words you wanna share with the audience, we've got thousands of people that are gonna watch this. Any final thoughts or pieces of advice or anything you'd like to give to our audience members today? 
All right, Josh, we'll start with you. And then if you guys want to say anything, just raise your hand. I don't, I don't have any other further advice. I just want to say for all of you guys that are watching this live broadcast, if you have not gotten a live stream convention ticket yet, maybe you're brand new in the business, do not miss your chance to get your live stream ticket. This event is going to be absolutely insane with the products we're launching, the tools we're launching, all the crazy stuff that's happening. You want to be there live virtually if you don't have a ticket and you, you know, we already sold out, but you want to be at least be there virtually so that you can get the information, be able to share it with your team. It's going to be absolutely incredible. So make sure you get your live stream ticket. You can go to the back office. You can click on convention. You can get your ticket, promote it to your team and um, be with us in spirit. The live stream tickets are $79 each. And I just want to say that we were originally going to raise the price for the live stream tickets because that was an early bird price, but we decided to not and just to leave it at $79. So, you know, now's your chance. Go in there, grab your live stream ticket. It's going to be um, an incredible event for us. We, we've got, I think we're going to do really, really good on this event. We've got some pretty cool stuff happening. So definitely want to be there. For sure. Anybody else want to say anything? Final words? Megan. Um, I would really say for the new people starting out to uh, stay focused and be coachable. If you go to your mentor and they ask you for, or you're asking them for advice, uh, don't assume that you know more than them because you're going to them asking for advice. Uh, they may give you some off the wall stuff. Um, I, I, my mentor did, and you might think it's crazy, but your mentors are the ones who have already achieved the success. So, so don't reinvent the wheel, stay coachable. I love it. All right, David, final thoughts. Okay, uh, quick final thought. I think what people need to do, uh, you know, if you want to end up ranking and becoming leaders in this company is you really need to make a decision because so many people get involved in this industry and they, you know, it's like getting in the water. They dip one toe in, they go, well, if it's kind of warm, then I'll put my second toe in and, and then my third toe and they're just kind of like dipping it, but they're always, you know, ready to pull back at any moment. So, you know, I think what people need to realize is that, you know, that they have found a home. And I think that's where people get scared sometimes is they don't, well, if I put all my energy out, will it really work for me? Will I get it back? Just know that you found a home and burn the ships and just go all out because you have found a home and this is the program to be with. That's it. Amen. Preach. All right, Aaron Parker, final words. David, I can't agree with you more on that one. Decide, decide to have success and you will. Um, I want to say this as well. You know, I'm just so fired up. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so grateful to be a part of this company, to be with these incredible leaders. Um, I don't even feel worthy to be with all these amazing people. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't even be here. So thank you so much to all of you that have you know, laid the, the foundation for this company. Um, I hope everyone watching this realizes that, I mean, guys like Robert Hollis made tens of millions of dollars. He comes out of retirement. It, it just, I want you to understand what you have in your hands. This is special. This company is unique. This is not like anything else out there. I know I've looked. I was looking for the, the, the potentially perfect company and this was it. So you have something amazing. Like David said, decide, jump all in, burn the boats. I, I mean, I'm, that's just, and again, everyone has their own way. But for me to have success, it means burning the boats. It's there's no other back doors. It's no other options. It's I'm all in. This is for my family. This isn't for me. It's for my wife and my kids. And when, and I'll say this also in closing thought is it's going to get tough. You're going to have moments of doubt. You're going to have moments of frustration. It happens to all of us. And the only thing that separates us from you possibly is either we've been here longer or when those moments of doubt and frustration seep into our head, we squash them. We, we throw them away. We stay focused on our goals. We are all in. And that is why we're here because we don't, let any excuse stop us. We are going a hundred percent and that's how these people got here. And I want all of you to believe that you can do it. 
if we can do it, you can do it. That's what kept me going for so many years, struggling for 15 years. And then finally having this like wake up call. It's like, what the heck? If they can do it, I can do it. What's stopping me? The only thing stopping me was me. So when you get that, you'll be up here next. Thank you, Josh and Jenna. Love you guys. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for hopping on. Thanks, everyone. That spending, was awesome training. Spending an hour with us tonight. Uh, if you are watching the replay, share it, replay it all you need to. Uh, we'll see you guys next week for week 13, our final week, which is just going to be our wrap up uh, for the whole course. Ashley Shift is going to be on as well as David's going to be back with us. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys. Have a good night. Thanks.